What chemical compounds are present in your drinking water? And at what concentrations are we finding these compounds? These are two of the most frequently asked questions we get here at the Suffolk County Water Authority. If you've listened to our second episode, you know exactly how the Suffolk County Water Authority's laboratory samples and tests your water to ensure it's safe to drink. In this episode, we'll let you know exactly where to find all of our laboratory test results, how to interpret them, and what it all means. I'm Jeff Sabo, Chief Executive Officer of the Suffolk County Water Authority, and this is What About Water? So we're back at the SCWA laboratory today to talk to laboratory manager Chris Niebling. Chris, when it comes to the consumer confidence report, how can people find the water quality data that's specific to their neighborhood? I know it's broken up by distribution area, but how do I know what distribution area I'm in? Yeah, the easiest way to see the CCR report is to go onto our website, and that is www.scwa.com. Once you find it and get onto the website there, you would click on a link for uh, water quality reports. That would then bring you to the CCR section, and you would scroll down to the most recent report there and click on that link, and that will bring you to our CCR page. While you're there, there are two boxes. The first box, if you click on that box, will take you to the full report. It's about 53 pages long. You can scroll through that report, and midway or towards the back of the report, you will find a section where your towns are located. Uh, You can look up your town, and then your associated distribution area will be found there. Once you find that, you can then go to the back of the report, and the data is all there as per your distribution area. The second link or button there, if you click on, is probably the easiest way to find your data. That will bring you to an interactive map where you can actually type in your street address, It'll bring it directly to your home, and then the distribution area report will pop up, and then you can go through that report uh, when you're ready. Excellent. So that contains every compound the Water Authority tests for and all of our results. Chris, what are the compounds that the average resident should be concerned about when they open up the Consumer Confidence Report? In my opinion, I would be looking at what we call emerging contaminants, These are relatively new to the system, and basically, in my opinion, you would not have a lot of data on these particular emerging contaminants. There are not a lot of toxicology reports out yet, uh, you know, through the government or through EPA. Uh, So those are the uh, type of contaminants that I would be looking out for in our CCR report. If you listened to our last episode about private versus public water, then you know SCWA's internal standards for water quality meet or surpass all New York State or federal regulations. And that goes for the emerging contaminants as well, like the ones Chris is referencing here. So I'm looking through the 2020 report right now, and I'm noticing a lot of columns that say ND, which stands for non-detect. What do we mean by non-detect, and can that change in the future? Chris, can a compound move from non-detectable to detectable? Yeah, non-detect simply means that the instrumentation that we use cannot see below a certain level. So every particular instrument that we have in our laboratory, there are certain what we call reporting limits. If you run a sample and it it is showing below that reporting limit, it would come up as non-detect. Now, you know, moving forward in the future, these non-detect, you know, compounds could then turn positive over time. All depends on, you know, there could be potential spills out there, you know, in the field. So it really all depends, you know, what is happening out in the environment. And Chris, why do so many compounds come back as non-detect? Most of the report, if you look at it at a glance, comes back as non-detect. Well, from the lab standpoint, we're only required to test for, I believe, 149 compounds. We test for well over 400. I believe at this point uh, in 2021, we're up to 414. You know, so we do test for a lot of compounds and contaminants, and the majority are negative. And just to add to that, Chris, I think it's important for people to understand that non-detect means it's below the level our instruments can reliably see. So typically far below any maximum contaminant level. It's the reason why our routine sampling is so important. If a contaminant were to appear down the road, we'd find it. So I'm looking at these values. 
but can you explain what units SCWA is using here? And give us an idea of what those units mean. How can you quantify what we're looking at? Yeah, in this report, there's basically two units of measurement. The first one being milligrams uh, per liter or parts per million, and the other one is micrograms per liter or parts per billion. Just to kind of put it in layman's terms, where you see one part per million is basically equal to one second in 12 days. Uh, And then where you have one part per billion, that is one second in 32 years. So you can see the difference between uh, milligrams per liter and micrograms per liter. It, it, It is a huge difference. We even go down to parts per trillion And that's even one second in 32,000 years, but you will not see those uh, units on the report. We actually do a conversion uh, from parts per trillion to parts per billion just to make it easier to view. You've mentioned earlier there are standards SCWA needs to follow in terms of water quality, whether they be federal standards or state standards. If my water was above the standard for a certain compound, How would I know that as a consumer? Would SCWA notify me? Yeah, there's three different types of tier notifications that the health department uh, requires us to do in certain cases. A tier one notification is basically notification within 24 hours. And normally this type of notification is where you would have, for example, an E. coli outbreak. Uh, In this case, we'd probably go door to door, handing out letters, knocking on doors, you know, things of that nature. So we we would definitely be out in the field notifying our customers with a tier one notification. Uh, Tier two is normally uh, what we call an MCL violation or maximum contaminant level violation. In this case, a compound would exceed a certain level and we would have 30 days to then notify our customers in this case, we try to get out there a little bit earlier, either by, uh, you know, an email type blast or, uh, you know, eventually mailing letters out to the customers uh, within that 30-day range. A Tier 3 notification is one where we would be in violation of not collecting the proper samples during the course of the year. In that case, we would have one year to notify the customer, and normally those notifications will be put in our consumer confidence report. And just so our listeners understand... These types of notifications that Chris is describing are extremely rare. There's only been a handful of notifications over the course of our 70 years in operation. So as I look through here, I notice there are different categories of compounds. I see volatile organics and semi-volatile organics. Can you just explain the difference between these two? Yeah, just, you know, in in, in simple chemistry terms, a a volatile organic compound just basically has a lower boiling point than a semi-volatile organic. And basically what that means is that your volatile organic compounds will tend to evaporate quicker into a gas state uh, than a semi-volatile organic. A couple of examples of volatile organics are degreasing solvents, dry cleaning solvents, gasoline derivatives. your volatile organic uh, contaminants will have more of an aromatic smell also. And your semi-volatile organics or you know, examples would be your pesticides and herbicides. So let me ask you this. How often is this document published? And as a consumer, how do I know when this information becomes available? This document is published every year in May. The health department requires that we get this out by May 31st. Uh, we normally try to get it out earlier in the month. It would be then, you know, published on our website. In terms of, you know, how you would know it is coming out, um, you can always check back in from time to time on our website, and there'll be notification on there. Chris, we've had customers in the past who've contacted us and said, I'm looking through your water quality data, but I'm having trouble navigating the document. If someone is having trouble interpreting this, is there anything we can do to help them? Yeah, um, if you ever have any questions uh, in terms of the CCR report, you can always call our customer service line at 631-698-9500, and they will transfer you over to one of our project managers uh, to answer some of these questions. If they're unable to answer the question, uh, they would then you know, transfer it over to you know, myself uh, or the other lab manager, Tom Snyder. Chris, thanks so much for joining us today. We really appreciate your time. Not a problem. 
Let's take a quick water break with correspondent Seth Wallach. Hey, Jeff. I'm in Northport today, and we're going to see if people know where to find information about their water quality. I haven't looked into it, but I would imagine if I go on a website, I would find it on the Suffolk County Water website, right? I would probably go online to www.northportwaterquality.com. I guess there's a something on the Water Authority or Suffolk County or something, and they list the chemicals in it. Do you know where to find information about the quality of your water? I guess a website, Suffolk County website, right? I Google it. That's all I know. Then when I get there, I'll scroll around, right? Um, I would Google it, and I'm sure I would find it eventually. Would I go to Suffolk County Water Authority? Absolutely. Uh, maybe I'd Google it, but I have no idea otherwise. Quality? Um, no. no. Well, I would call the water. You would no. call the water authority? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. yeah, I would assume that, yeah, I would have to find out on the bill who to call. I guess I would Google Long Island water quality. <laughs> online. 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 Where online would you find that? I guess I'd go to the Suffolk County Water Authority and look there. I'm assuming you would know. They would know, right? The website, I guess. Which website? I usually go on that Suffolk County Water Authority website, pay my bill. I usually wait for the report to come in the mail. To be honest, I, at this point, do not know. So my only assumption would be to buy my own private water test and test the water myself because you can't really trust what you hear. Uh, Google, online. What would you Google? Uh, water quality, um, <laughs> I don't know. I'm not sure exactly where to go, but I'm sure I can find it. Google. Google, okay. What, what would you put in? What would you Google? Local uh, water delivery. Do you know where to find information about your water quality? I find it in, in the internet, no? On the internet? Where, where would you go to find it? Hmm. What about you, sir? Where, where would you go? No idea where to look. No I idea. guess you'd look on the website for the water authority, right? Well, I would just go online. We're online. On the would internet. You go? Uh, well, I would just say I would plug in and Google maybe water, uh, you know, yeah. water what for East Northport or you know water quality for East Northport. That's what I would do, and I'm sure something would come up. So almost everyone we spoke to said they'd look online, but only a few people specifically mentioned the Water Authority's website. If you Google Suffolk County water quality or even Northport water quality, we're the top hit. But the easiest way to get there is to go to scwa.com, click on the Water Quality tab, then Water Quality Reports. Jeff? As we wrap up this episode of What About Water, please be assured drinking water suppliers do their best to make sure the annual Consumer Confidence Report is understandable to our customers. Not only through internal review, but also at the highest levels of government. In fact, at this very moment, a working group has been formed via the National Drinking Water Association Council to not only improve the CCR's availability to the public, but also to make sure it's clear and understandable. What About Water is produced by Jeff Sabo, Tim Motes, and Seth Wallach. This episode was edited and engineered by Seth Wallach. Be sure to follow the Suffolk County Water Authority on Facebook and Twitter. Until next time, I'm Jeff Sabo. I'm referring to the Long Island Water Pod podcast. Oh, yeah, Suffolk County Water Podcast. Yes. yes. I'd love to be a guest on that one.